I can see into your nightmares and present them to your eyes. I can also show you your heart's deepest desires or rip out your throat with my claws. And you think to toy with me? I sit upon a gilded padded throne, my place of power, a hidden gemstone in the dark corners of Neverwinter. The Sword Coast is ripe with opportunity for those cunning and ruthless enough to claim it. But I am fashionably late to the party, irksome, but perhaps this brings opportunity. I puff on my pipe of silk root the earthy sweet scent wafting into the air, putting a haze over the fine works of art, exotic sweets, and sultry concubines that litter my sitting room. The caste system of my people is nearly absolute. I was lucky enough to be born into an upper caste, but not nearly at the top. The society of my people is a malevolent meritocracy after all, and only the fittest may survive it. If I am to do so, I need more power. My musings are interrupted by a guard rushing in and falling dead upon a heap of soft purple and blue pillows, and a group of humanoid creatures, calling themselves adventurers, charge in after him. I smirk and take another long drag of silkroot smoke. Peace, please. Let us speak a moment before you dirty this place with any more blood. Might I propose to thee a query? Let us imagine for a moment thou art a hapless fiend, toiling away endlessly in the Nine Hells, struggling through infernos of suffering for centuries, until you collect enough souls to earn a title of noble devil. The power is well and good but the never-ending monotony of the Nine Hells suffocates you. Your gaze is ever on the mortal plane, for there the rigid realities put forth by the Lords of the Nine doth not apply. So with thy newfound power and influence, you uncover forbidden rituals. You sever that which ties your essence to the fiendish body, and achieve what many devils crave. Freedom. Freedom from the outer planes to walk the mortal world as an outsider. But where do you go now that you are here? What do you do? The answer is obvious to those with any sense in their skulls. Forge thyself a body of flesh and blood, obtain power and influence, and live in the decadence and freedom from hierarchy that dominated your immortal being for countless centuries before. That's exactly what I have done. I am a freed devil, an outsider of great power. I am a Roxasha. Mostly no one would be able to see through my human guise. A simple illusion spell to hide my true features is all it takes, but you, I feel you special. Consider this a gesture of goodwill as I show my true face. Look upon me in all my glory. I take the form of a humanoid tiger, but I am no savage lycanthrope. If my garb of fine silken robes and gorgeous gems didn't already tell you, I am far more refined, more civil, more... just more. A proper introduction begins with a shake of the hand. No, no, I insist, and I know how to control my claws, have no fear. Is something troubling you? Oh, right, the state of my hands. Yes, they are on backwards. Confusing, but one gets accustomed rather quickly. The ritual used to free mine essence from the hells was a workaround to the natural order of creation, and it seems this is the price. But trust me, a few mismatched appendages are worth it. I know that thou may wish to slay me, now that mine truest nature is benounced, but I would advise against such actions at least until you hear my offer. I might be of the lower planes, but wisdom does not discriminate between good and evil. Let us not be hasty. Dost thou wish to know the best part about this dark ritual thou hath freed me? 
Mine power as a greater devil did not leave me. My influence over the weave to cast spells is as strong as it ever was. I could obliterate the lot of you with a wave of my hand, but I don't want to wreck the furniture. Of course, it is possible you are cunning wizards and mages yourselves. To cast your spells at me would be folly, however. The dark ritual of freedom from Bator comes with many perks, one of which is immunity to magic. Unless thou art an archmage capable of casting the highest level of magic possible, I would urge thee not waste either of our time. If thou means to bribe me, rest assured I have wealth to spare. Not that I would, I was fortunate enough to be born a rook, an honored knight of sorts in the society of Rakshasa. I won't go into the details. Ah, uh, perhaps I should enlighten thee on something else, though. Thy folly to expose and slay me for the sake of thine meager homeland runs deeper than first thought. There are many of my kind living here, under your tender noses. Amazing what a little illusion magic can do, is it not? Now that we have established where we all sit on the pecking order, I do wish to do business. You did well to find my safe house. My gruesome hands applaud your skill and strength. Now, I wish to offer thee a deal. Work for me. For your great efforts and show of strength, I can easily make you my top lieutenants. I may be a rook, but there is always more to be gained. Wealth, power, influence, bottomless. And I can share this bottomless cup of mine with you. You want to be richer, faster, stronger, smarter, more respected in your society? You want those who wronged you in the past to pay for it with pain or humiliation? Done. All of it done. All you have to do is swear utter and unquestioning loyalty to me. Need convincing? Well, it is good I hath procured some insurance. Look through this magic mirror. Do you recognize these people? That child, these elderly folk? Now you see those others? The ones that follow your loved ones home from their daily routines, or buzzing about their homes like flies? Those are my servants. I know that the bonds of family run deep in you mortals. I'll never understand why you cling to such exploitable weaknesses. What, did you think I was unaware of your scheming? That I was blindly assuming my servants had it all under control, that I wasn't watching? I run a tight ship. And unlike you fools, I do not leave loose ends dangling. Know that for every insult, slight, or attempt on my life you make here today, I can unleash tenfold upon those you care about most. A fun fact, did you know the favorite meal of a Rakshasa is the flesh of humans? Preferably while they are still alive, fresh as can be. Do not think to escape and be there for them to keep them safe. No one is safe around you. No one will ever be safe around you again. Not as long as you insist on being my enemy. I have been watching you all for some time with mine own spies, but also my own eyes. Illusion magic, remember? Adopting a disguise as a city guard, a beggar, or an innkeeper is child's play. That reminds me of another fun fact for my honored guests. My kind can see beyond flesh and into your very mind. That is how I knew where you were and where you were sheltering your most precious treasures. Relax. I take good care of my friends, and you and your families will want for nothing in my service. No doubt you're asking yourselves, why? Why go to such lengths to recruit us? Who would kill you on sight? You're not the first assassins to try to kill me, honestly. But for everything else, I shall reveal all and let my honesty be another mark of my sincere desire not to cause thee harm. Because I had to test you. You managed to follow my network of informants. You found the trail of coin, followed them both right back to me. Not to mention killing a few of my best soldiers and bodyguards in the process. Not to worry, they're replaceable. But not you. Oh no, no, no. I may have given you breadcrumbs here or there, but a test is not a test without difficulty. 
If you died, it wouldn't be worth my time. But talent such as yours doth deserve a far more fitting task. In fact, I can fulfill my promises of wealth and power and stay my hand from causing unspeakable suffering to the people you love most if you do one thing for me. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Normally, I demand loyalty for life. But what we both stand to gain, and what you stand to lose, I feel this would be a steal. There is another Rakshasa living in the dark underbelly of Neverwinter. We have been at a tense peace for some time, but the winds have changed. I plan to dominate my neighbor, force him into submission, and with all of you by my side, I can do so. I will be elevated to the rank of a Rajan, or perhaps even Maharaja, to be the Grand Duke of my kind, the Lord of Neverwinter's shadows. Oh, my heart doth leap at this. Rejoice, my future partners, for in dismantling my competitor, you will not only be given all I promise you, but the public will elevate you. The good people of this city will raise you up as heroes who expunged the cancer of this Rakshasa from their great and noble city. I will give you the means to end my rival. This is a crossbow bolt, blessed by the High Cleric of Lathander and Neverwinter. If this pierces the flesh of a Rakshasa, we will be slain instantly. You could kill me with it, but... You already know what will happen if you do. My men will carry out their orders, and your nests will be empty. Or you can kill my rival, and live out your days as the kingly, celebrated heroes of Neverwinter. I lean back in my throne, smiling and taking another puff of silk root. Now then, honored guests, what shall it be? Thank you all for watching all the way through to the end of this video. So I had a ton of fun making this. The Rakshasa are one of those monsters that feel both well-known and underutilized to me. I hear people talk about them all the time, but I don't really see them in any games, at least none of the ones that I've played in or watched for a while now. If you want to go the extra mile, be sure to check out my Patreon, and you'll be able to see my videos early and completely ad-free. As always, be sure to leave a like and a comment to please the almighty algorithm, ring the bell, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss the fresh content coming up, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers!